Weight Cross coverage of OHSAA Wrestling, made possible by SWOCA, the Southwest Ohio Wrestling Coaches Association. Klein Residential. Jeff Burkhoff, Old Coaches Association. Sarah and Dan Starkey. Mark Flong of La Rosa's Cold Spring, Kentucky. Steve Burke, Friends of Operation Giveback. Dr. Kevin Riley. Kent Smith from State Farm. And Dr. Stephen Daly. Hi, and welcome to the 2023 OHSAA District Wrestling Finals. I'm Jerry Tischler, and I'm here with Lou Carraher and Byron Keeling. Uh, we are all former wrestlers and either current or former wrestling coaches in the greater Cincinnati area. Thank you for joining. Uh, first up, I'm going to go ahead and let Lou introduce who's coming up at the 106 pound weight class. So at 106 pounds today, we have uh, Adam Gelman from Sycamore coming in with a record of 26 and 1. And from LaSalle, Elijah Mohanna with a record of 27 and 11. So for our viewers in the uh, Corrine area, we're also going to be doing a split screen covering fifth place. So at fifth place, Ryan, Byron, you want to introduce who's coming up for fifth DeMarco place? DeMarco Cates from Corrine will be going against TJ Murray from Troy. DeMarco Cates from Corrine will be going against TJ Murray from Troy. Okay, and we are underway now. Right now in the finals on the uh, first mat, we have Adam Gelman. Adam Gelman is in the white singlet, and he's against um, Elijah Mahana from LaSalle. And LaSalle is in the black, red, and white. So right now they go out of bounds. Both wrestlers trying to secure the takedown in the first period. Uh, right now, they're going for the upper body throw, trying a head and arm. Adam Gelman trying a head and arm. And he's almost there, and he gets it. And it is rolled inbounds. It is inbounds, and he has Elijah Mahana in trouble right now on his back. He's holding on to it. Elijah fights out of it. And they're waved out of bounds. But right now, Adam Gelman got the two-point takedown and the three-point near fall. So Adam Gelman is a junior coming in ranked 12th in the state and Mohanna is ranked 16th as a freshman. He's got a cradle locked up now. Mohanna's in a lot of trouble here. Adam has a style that he just likes to attack constantly and go get it. He's not afraid to take chances, take risks, to put his opponent on his back and get the win. Adam Gelman right now looks like he is scoring near fall criteria. The referee, if he makes it a two count, it is a two point near fall. If he makes it to a five count, it is a three point near fall. And I I am guessing right now, it looks like he's gonna score at least a three point near fall once this situation is uh, ruled complete. Adam needs to settle in, get his hips back on top, try to recover here. I think the maturity is really showing here in this match with a freshman going up against a junior here at 106 pounds. Mohanna gets a reversal here. Now he's going to work on top with a deep half. He needs to crank that half over, reset it, see if he can get him to his back. What he wants to do there is reset it, keep him in bounds. Oh, and that's time. First. That's the end of the period. So right now the score is Adam Gelman, eight, and Elijah Mohanna of LaSalle, two. Right now it is Elijah's choice, and he chose down to start the second period. <clears throat> Expect the pace to pick up here for both wrestlers. Both these guys like to go fast. 
Elijah hits a quick sit out turn in. Right now it looks like he's up. Oh, now he's in trouble, in trouble again. again. He <laughs> kind of got flipped a little bit there, but he got back in position, so no longer in trouble. And now he's got here. a reverse cradle. He's got a reverse cradle. There we go. And Adam seen that Gelman one in a while. is in trouble. Adam Gelman is uh, definitely in trouble fighting his back right now. There should be a two point near fall and a two point reversal scored here for Elijah. Oh. There's a back points, and there's a reversal. The referee scored them. And now Adam Gilman reverses Elijah, and he gets two points on the reversal. Pretty exciting match here already. We've got a lot of points scored. It's 10 to 7 currently. I'm not sure if there's more points that need to go up on the board or not. I, I lost count. A minute 12 left in the second period. Um, getting ready to blow the whistle, and this match is currently Back and forth, underway, we have a two-point reversal from Elijah Mohana, pretty much right off the whistle. That tightens it up to 10 to nine. Both these guys need to find a way to get control here to slow this match down to establish dominance. Elijah Mohana working that high half, keeps working that high half. That'll wear a man down. Having to deal with the high half, you know, for Minute and a half, minute three quarters. That'll that'll work your neck. That'll wear you out. That'll wear you down. That's what he's trying to do. And right now, now he's he working near over. bar. Potentially dangerous is the call. Cannot go against the natural movement of the joint. That's why they call that potentially dangerous. So when that situation does happen, the referee calls it, and it looks like somebody must be bleeding. Injury time. Oh, injury time. Okay, got him. Get Adam Gelman. Uh, currently injury time looks like his shoulder from getting worked by that high half and then the bar arm series uh, looks like he's uh, maybe got it uh, sprained a little bit there so obviously the medical staff is taking a look at it right now so and this, we should be resuming shortly go ahead this match was uh, looking like it was going to get out of hand pretty quickly it was eight nothing and just like that is ten to nine so mohana is not going away easy yeah, I love how he stayed with it. He never panicked. He kept fighting his way back, chip away at the score. Now we got ourselves a one-point match. I'd like to see Muhammad try to uh, dominate here on top, wear Gelman down, and see if he can uh, look for some more back points. You guys are getting ready to start. 25 seconds left in the second period. Mohammed probably trying to ride this out, but now Adam he's in trouble. Step over here. It's about to be reversed with a step over from uh, Adam Gelman, and he got the two point reversal to make the score now 12 to 9 as the period ends. Excellent timer right there by Gelman. You know exactly how much time he had left for that step over and got it. Both wrestlers have been a little susceptible to that, uh, that crackdown or kind of like a a roll just clamping down on that arm and being able to pull the guy on top off the back. And yeah, once good. they get their hips going, they're able to step right over. Great point there. Both these guys got excellent hips, so they know how to work their way through a scramble right there. No. Adam took advantage of it. So we have blood time here. I was going to give a quick score update to so the top five. Lebanon uh, has 84 points. Harrison in fourth with 96 and a half. Moeller in third with 97, LaSalle 147 in second, and Springboro leading 159 points. So a tight race atop, so this is important for LaSalle. Getting ready to start the third period, and it is underway. Uh, wrestlers in the neutral position. So obviously trying to secure a takedown, and if possible, take down to a near fall criteria straight to their back. Adams working out of an underhook here to see if he goes down to a front headlock or passes by for a single leg. Mahana countering with a two on one here. No, a, for Merkel. It's a pretty lengthy 106 pounder, so I look for him to maybe move up in weight classes as he uh, gets a little older, puts a little more uh, muscle on there as he's a 106 pound freshman. We've got about a minute and a half left in the third period, third and final period, provided it does not go to overtime. Uh, looks like it's Adam Gilman trying to get, get behind the arms, get that single yep. leg takedown. 
I think our score reflects 10 to 9, but the actual score is 12 to 9 currently with a minute left here in the third. Mahana's trying to work to pop his head out. Oh, stalemate there. Thought they should have let him wrestle it out there, but back on our feet. So with about just one minute left, Adam Gelman is up by three points, but he's trying another head and arm. And I don't know get his hips higher and roll through here, or Mahana's going to end up getting the takedown. Right here, Mahana, if he slips that leg and he's in a good position, Gelman here still, still trying to work and get a stalemate. Fortunately for him, he wasn't able to slip that leg and get the two. Gelman killed a lot of time there in that position. Elijah's got to pick up the pace here as he's in a front headlock position now looking to score. He's got it. Muhammad gets a nice takedown off a of front headlock. Now he's kicking him out again. He's going straight to the headlock, front headlock series again. I don't think they awarded the escape just yet. He's a Not yet. It's still 12 to 11 at the, at the moment. He needs to let him go so he can get the one and then go get the takedown. There's stalling Green. I'm not sure how he's stalling if he's the bottom man at this point. Ten he's seconds holding left. on, not letting him separate from that position. I think that's where the stalling call came from. Okay, thank you for that. Great strategy there by Gelman, but we clock. And we have our 103, 106 pound champion, Adam Gelman of Sycamore High School over Elijah Mahana. And we're gonna be moving on to our 113 pound match. Lou, you wanna introduce? So I think we got Nathan Moser of Monroe, who is a sophomore with a record of 34 and seven, currently ranked 13th in the state, going up against Connor Lambers of Elder, also a sophomore with a record of 46 and six. I expect another high point scoring match here. Both these guys also like to get after it. Apparel sales will close at 4.30 p.m. If you have not yet picked up your district apparel, the apparel sales will close at 4.30 p.m. So these two wrestlers did meet last week in the sectional finals, in their particular sectional, uh, with Connor Lambers finishing with a fall last week. So we'll see what happens uh, today. Mozart, it looks like he made adjustments. He tried to slide by there and didn't get it. Again, having wrestled just last week, I'm sure they're very aware of each other's style. So you may see a little bit more of a conservative approach in this match. Uh, again, kind of feel the other wrestler out and um, you know see what you learned from oh, last nice. week. And right there, he does a hip toss and puts him on his back. So Nathan Moser now fighting off his back. Connor Lambers had a nice hip toss and he scored two takedown and now he's gonna score at least three near fall, if not a fall. I like what he did there to secure his back points. He hooked that leg right off that hip toss there. So he couldn't roll through. There's trouble now. That's it right there. Fall, minute five. Your champion at 113, Connor Lambers. Elder over Nathan Moser by fall. Next up at 120, Lou, who do we have coming up? We have Aiden Allen, a junior from LaSalle with a record of 36 and eight. Currently ranked third in the state wrestling up against another elder wrestler, Joey Thayman, a sophomore with a record of 37 and 10, currently ranked seventh in the state. Just to give our viewers a little a bit of uh, information about the importance of this match. So the winner of the district from the Southwest will go up against a fourth place finisher from another district uh, selected at random. Uh, the second place wrestler will go up against a third placer from another district. And then um, with the second wrestling the third and the first wrestling a fourth, it's, it's a big difference here coming out of districts to go up against either a, a district fourth or a district third. So right now there's a little bit of a lapse uh, because we are waiting for the other two matches to finish up. So simultaneous to the championship, going for first and second, we have uh, the third and fourth place match going on, as well as the fifth and sixth place. So the importance of the matches 
Uh, if you place one through four, you qualify for the state tournament in your weight class. And then if you wind up uh, fifth or sixth, if you wind up fifth, you are in the uh, alternate spot. So if somebody gets injured or sick and they cannot wrestle next week at state, you fall in and you become the, the uh, opted Southwest District um, uh, wrestler for that, for that particular weight class. <clears throat> Got a close one here on the fifth place map. Scored a two to one in the second period. It looks like right now uh, we did switch over to Levi Howard of Centerville versus Yemen Bonner of Talawanda. And I believe that is for the fifth place. That's spot correct. at uh, 113. Howard here doing a good job, kind of controlling the match, not taking any risks. This match, although it's for fifth place, is also important because as a state alternate, somebody in your region does not make weight, you step right into that place. So it's very important to finish this out, even though these guys technically aren't qualifiers, but anything can happen. Looks like right now we have we Centerville's have Levi, currently yeah, in. Levi Howard Centerville. He is in the black and, and white singlet versus Gavin Bonner of Talawanda in the red, white, and blue. W Nolan. He was the champ. Levi Howard right now trying to defend the shot. He is up two to one. It is the third period of the match. And again, the winner of this match is the alternate for the state tournament next week to fill in in case somebody gets injured or sick or uh, misses weight. Bonner needs to keep, keep taking shots, forcing the issue here. One takedown can win it for him. As we're approaching 25 seconds here. Byron, do you know, has, has either wrestler been warned for stalling at this point? No, there, there's been no stalling call. Slow pace match here. Neither guy taking any risks. But Bonner here turning up the heat as he's trying to get this takedown to secure the win. There's another shot. Comes up to an over-under. Look for some fireworks here in the last five yep. seconds. Stall a call there. Look for, for the it. throw. Not going to get it. Howard's going to secure the victory. Fifth place and be a state alternate. Nice shot there defending that lap throw. So fifth place match. We have uh, Devin Howard uh, from Centerville finishing fifth um, over Gavin Bonner of Talamanda. Third place match also just finished up with Lentz of Fairfield with the fall over Miller of Ross. So it looks like we're getting ready to start now <clears throat> the final match uh, between Joey Thaman of Elder versus Aiden Allen of LaSalle in match number one. Aiden in the white singlet, white and red singlet. Thayman in the black and purple and white single. And wrestling for the championship at 120 pounds on man number one. Joey Thayman from Elder versus Amy Allen. How about that? These wrestlers I met before with Allen being the victor in the last match. See what adjustments have been made here for Thayman. I believe these two probably would have met multiple times this year being in the GCL. 
in their dual match and last week in the finals at sectionals. Allen, I think, getting the better of him. No, Allen is currently ranked third in the state. And Feynman, what is he ranked? Uh, currently, I, I see him at seventh. Seventh, okay. So uh, in Ohio, the top eight finishers place. So both are predicted to be state placers. Yeah, and that's the ultimate goal here is to get to state and anything can happen and get on that podium. Both guys feeling each other out here, matching zone levels down low. We'll see who gets it up into their offense from this low position here. Damon looking for a shot there, the knot. We got double overs. Oh, we got a he got an illegal hold illegal there because hold. I think he locked, touched hands. He, he did lock. He locked in a position where uh, it was dangerous to the to Joey Thamen um, in terms of a throw, in terms of potential back throw. Thamen on a shot. He's in on a nice single. He's trying to circle around to finish. Aiden fighting it off with the wizard. He's got to watch the broomstick here. Always ever get it rolled through. Out of bounds. Excellent scrambling ability there. As you saw, he had his leg picked up and uh, nine times out of 10, that guy's gonna finish that shot. But Aiden Allen, a good good scrambler and able to funk roll out of there. Damon was able to crack the code here in this low single position that they're wrestling from. Matched his level, got to his single. Let's see if he could do it again here. Damon's dominating the head position, keeping Allen from using that underhook. Both wrestlers pretty evenly matched right now. When one goes low, the other one goes low, and so neither, you know, trying to let the other one have an advantage. Nice, nice duck under there oh, wow, to a was hip toss. That He's was a nice sequence here, of moves. Looking for six. Two near fall and two takedown. I'm sorry, that was a three point near fall and two point takedown, which puts uh, Aiden Allen up five to one with two seconds left and this period is at an end right now. Current that, score five to one. Allen did an excellent job there timing up that duck under. That's right, that duck under right into a chest block here as you see, changing his level, gets him moving here, gets his weight off balance and able to throw his chest into him there. Catch him for five. What a way to end the first period for uh, Allen. So Joey Thamen takes bottom, and he already got the escape. So again, these two back in neutral position on their feet, or should I say on their knees. Yeah, these two are pretty comfortable down in that uh, football stance almost, that three-point stance. Scrambling here, he's got the inside shot. Out of bounds, keeps his toes in, and they award the two points. He did keep his toes in. So again, in a takedown situation, um, all you need to have is your your toes in bounds upon completion of the move. Previously, previous years back, uh, you had to have your knees hit in bounds first, uh, but that's not the case now. As long as your toes are in bounds uh, when you hit the mat, and that counts as a takedown. Joey, Joey Thamen gets an escape that puts the match score at seven to three in favor of Aiden Allen. It was an excellent move by Thamen on bottom, putting together multiple moves to get away. Now he's looking for a takedown on his feet. I'd say Aiden prefers being on his feet. He's very fluid in this situation. A lot of misdirection, a lot of slick moves with the duck unders, snap downs, go behinds. Thamen needs to do a better job of controlling the tie, trying to slow him down. Aiden has the advantage on quickness and reattacks here. In about a minute left in the second period with Aiden Allen up 7-3 over Joey Thamen of Elder. And again, both wrestlers right now working from their knee position, the lower position, you know, trying to secure the takedown. Both wrestlers, you know, obviously very comfortable working in the low position. A lot of wrestlers typically uh, aren't so comfortable in that position. In terms of technique, Byron, what do you think is the advantage of, of going low like that? It forces the, the uh, opponent to match your level. When you are comfortable down there, 
you know which way he's got to go. He's got to come through your hands. He's got a hand fight through him. So you could kind of time that up to get down to your low single or like he attempted there a double leg because that guy is kind of taken out of his element because he takes away his reaction time on defense. That's right. You said it. He takes away a lot of his offense there. He's, he's not able to create the shots that he wants to get, so he's kind of forced to go in hand fighting heavy on the head or he's got to get angles another way. Joey Thamey did get in on a good head inside single there, but could not could not circle around and finish uh, in time. The period ends with right now Aiden Allen on top, seven to three. Third period about to start. Aiden Allen chooses down to start the third period. Thamey did a better job hand fighting and getting into that shot. That's got to be his recipe there when he's down in that three point stance. To Allen see if he can get out. back to that single leg here. These guys want to wrestle this match on their feet. Pretty much been there the whole entire match. Neither wrestler really showing much on top or bottom. Oh, Ooh, nice, nice ankle, ankle pick. pick. Look at that. Allen. He keeps the wrist, Damon though. Damon fights with it. He's got hand control. He's got to keep that hand and face wow. him. points. Amazing, you know, fighting that off by Joey Thamon. I thought it was a takedown, but, you know, he did not secure it past reaction time. So there was no takedown awarded. Payment here has got a hand fight. See if he can get back to that single and find a way to finish it when he gets in. Closing in on a minute remaining in the match. Aiden Allen with an 8 to 3 lead. Joe Thayman's got to get something going here. Yep, he's got to go now. Joey Thayman's going to need at least a, what we call a five point move, which is a takedown and taking the, the uh, other wrestler straight to his back uh, with about a minute left. So they go out of bounds. Both wrestlers seem to be in pretty good uh, condition here in the third period. Seems to be in, uh, in better position, Allen. He is with the conditioning here. He's able to neutralize Damon's offense with that three-point oh. stance and gets Got another takedown. Got him again with that duck under off to another move there. Nice to have that one-two combo combination of uh, two moves there, get him going one way and, and, and attack the other direction, being able to finish. You see Joey a lot Thayman. of wrestlers now are using that duck under as a setup for, to their takedowns. Yeah, Joey Thayman almost had a chance to catch him in that five-point move that we were talking about. Uh, Aiden Allen was just a little bit off balance on that duck under. There's a split, split second where you have a chance to maybe catch them and take them straight to their back, but obviously he was not able to secure that. And that concludes the match. Uh, final score, Aiden Allen is your district champion at 120 over Joey Thayman of Elder. And who do we have coming up at 126? 126 pounds, we have Jaden Cochran of Miamisburg with a record of 36 and one. Up against Marshall Morenci, a freshman from Anderson with a record of 40 and 7, ranked 12th in the state, and Cochran currently ranked third in the state. Now these two did meet last week in their sectional finals. Um, this is out at the Lebanon sectional with Jaden Cochran <clears throat> coming ahead, out ahead victorious last week, but we'll see what happens tonight. Also wrestling here, we have Eli Marengo of LaSalle wrestling for third place uh, up against Bryce Sears of Colerain with a record of 39 and six over on the mat three for third place. Great shot there by Cochran. Send it off by Morrissey. Cochran back on the inside single. He picks it up off the mat. Looking to finish here. See if he can get a back trip or maybe push it to the floor. It's a tip of the trip. Okay, we got a split screen now. So on the left for our viewers is uh, the championship match 
Marshall Morrency of Anderson versus Jaden Cochran of Miamisburg. And on the right side of your screen, we have Eli Marengo uh, of LaSalle versus Bryce Sears of Coleraine going for third place. This was also a sectional rematch from last week. Marengo getting the better of Sears in the finals there. So in terms of um, Marengo and Sears, how did they how did they get to th this position? Can you tell us a little bit about their path? So Marenzi beat Marengo here in this in the championship semifinals. And Marengo dropped down and was able to get a victory in the consolation semifinals, or the blood round as we like to call it. Um, and then Sears lost an earlier bout, I believe, to. Uh, Centerville wrestler was able to battle back uh, for this third and fourth place match and qualify for state. So, although all the wrestlers that you're looking at here in this screen, split screen, they've all qualified for the state tournament next week because the top four finishers in each weight class qualify for the state tournament. Now, what's important in terms of your, your position, if you finish first uh, in your district, you will, in the first round, draw automatically a fourth place finisher from another district. And second place, you're going to draw a third place finisher. And it goes on down. If you're third place, you draw a second place finisher. Fourth place, you draw a champion from another district. So positioning is, is key in terms of trying to get the best opportunity to place at state. Nice push out of bounds there. Marengo seems to take a shot to the face. It's a little shot to the face there. The refs are discussing it now. Here in the championship match, Cochran escapes. He gets a 1-0 lead here in the second period. Looks like Eli Marengo uh, needing to take injury time. Looks like maybe he, oh, looks like maybe his chin is uh, kind of motioning towards his chin. I don't know if he caught a head to his chin. Or maybe got it uh, poked in the eye. Hard to say. Um, we can switch over to uh, covering the match on the left. Morrency of Anderson versus uh, Jaden Cochran of Miamisburg. That match right now is one nothing in favor of um, Cochran. Cochran, yes. Cochran was able to escape quickly. Now that both wrestlers are back on their feet. Um, Cochran's taking a lot of shots. Not. 100% committed to him. Marissa has been able to fend them off rather easily. Now we see both wrestlers wrestling in that three-point stance, just like last match. And now we're back in action uh, on the split screen on the right. Eric Marengo of LaSalle in the black singlet versus uh, Bryce Sears of Coleraine uh, with the red and white singlet and the cardinal on the back. Cocker with a nice shot here in the final. awarded a double leg takedown. Now he's looking to work on top. Moringo in the third place match just attempted a shot that was fended off. Moringo is currently a one point advantage right now over uh, Bryce Sears of Coleraine. And that is the end of the period. And now wrestlers are now in a neutral position to start the third period. Again, uh, Bryce Sears of Coleraine down by one point to Eli Marengo. Cockle hit with a ca caution there, not lined up properly on top. Marissa's trying to take advantage here in a scramble situation. He's looking to get a double, try to get a reversal. They're on the edge, out of bounds. One second left in the second period here in the championship match. Marengo in a nice shot, looking to finish. He did get the two takedown. That puts him up three to zero in the third period over Bryce Sears of Coleraine. And right now he's, he looks to be riding and potentially trying to work a bar arm series from the left side to try to turn and get some near fall points. On the left side of the screen here in the third period of the championship match, 3-0 in favor of Cochran here. See if he rides and looks for a term or 
cuts him and goes back to his feet. He's got a leg in. Potentially dangerous call there as Morrissey stands up. Right side you have Marengo still trying to work that bar arm series, try to work a turn. Right now he's doing a nice job, quite frankly, of just riding. You know, he's got a three to nothing lead and there's about 35 seconds left in that particular match. Cocker riding tough here in the third period, trying to wear his opponent down, making him earn it to work back to his feet. Marinci gets to his feet as he cuts away this one. Blue one match. Bryce Sears getting the escape to put him within two points with time waiting down. It's about 12 seconds left. He needs a takedown to tie it up because right now he is losing three to one and there are 11 seconds left in the match uh, for Eli Marengo and Bryce Sears. Again, Eli Marengo currently up three to, three to two. Cocker in it here on the shot trying to finish. Marissi doing a great job defending it, trying to keep his head stuffed. Cocker was able to get, get his head out and get two. Five one the championship match. And that concludes your match for third place with Eli Marengo of LaSalle over Bryce Sears of Cole Rain. Now we're gonna focus just on the championship match, which is Marshall Morrency of Anderson versus Jaden Cochran of Miami's Bird. Cochran in a crossbody ride here, looking to see if he can turn Morrency over, score some more points. Morrency able to work the leg out here. He's trying to come out the back door. Yeah, at this point he wants to be pretty conservative with a 5-1 lead and 20 seconds left. Don't, don't get too high here. Stay on top, finish it out. If you're Marissa, you keep working to come out the back door. He's running out of time here with only 10 seconds left. Stalemate. Remember that name Marissa, he's got a brother coming up here in a couple, couple matches, also looking for a district title. From Anderson, yeah. And he's undefeated, I believe, correct? Correct. He's 25 and 0 currently, uh, returning state placer, and I believe he's ranked third in the state. Right now, as time is running down, it looks like your 126 pound champion will be Jane Cochran of Miamisburg over uh, Marsha Morrissey of Anderson. Who do we have coming up at 132? Moving on to 132 pounds, we have a, a match that features two returning state placers. Holden Hewn of LaSalle, currently 33 and six, was a state runner up last year until he ran into a buzzsaw from Perrysburg. Uh, McCall, also a two-time state placer. He's finished seventh and sixth. He's currently 31 and five. This should be a great match up here in the finals. This should be a fun match. McCall usually brings a lot of uh, energy and a lot of uh, excitement when he's out there on the mat. Hune's going to be looking to neutralize that. Hoon Hune is going to be in the black and red singlet, and Jack McCall of Lebanon will be in the white and black and maroon, I believe. Both wrestlers shake hands, and they're ready to square off. Quickly going after it, it's Hoon Hune. Right in on the shot. He's trying to finish here. McCall with excellent defense here. He's looking for a chance to get two of his own. If he could pass his leg by, out of bounds. Bit of a scramble situation there. Uh, both wrestlers obviously know what they're doing in terms of scrambling and trying to trying to uh, fight off the takedown situation. I'm curious to know if these two have ever faced each other in the past. Hewn was down at 113 pounds last year, so he's bumped up to 132 this year. See if the weight's a, a big difference for him or not. Doesn't seem to be as he's 33 and six and racked up quite a resume this year. Jack McCall, although he likes to uh, move quickly, he can be a very physical wrestler here. So let's see how, if that becomes an advantage for him being the upperclassman here. Jack McCall trying to work his way in on the shot. And Horton Hewn kind of turns it back, gets a single and works for the takedown and did he get the takedown he did get the takedown that was excellent how he used that underhook there to pass by and get it to a double leg shot of his own off his opponent's offense jack mccall fighting to get to his feet but holden hune trying to throw the leg in jack fights off the leg and now holden hune actually gets the leg in which is a leverage advantage typically 
Uh, that's why the wrestler does throw the leg in. If you look with his right hand, he's trying to hit a far half, far side half from the leg position. So with the legs, he's able to control his hips and break him down to the mat. And now he's going to probably look to cross face, try to maybe slip a cradle in or work a power half in. These are all leverage moves to try to turn the man. Yeah, I watch uh, Hoon's semifinal match, and he's, he's very heavy with the tricep traps, likes to run the cradles. Right now, he's working with that leg in the, in the half. Yeah, I like the strategy he's using here, making McCall work on bottom, throwing double boots in, stretching him out. Oh, it looks like, did he get uh He's got two. two. He did get two near falls. So he, to... he did get the two two count. Um, Quick swipe there. See if he did it work. He used the bar arm on the backside to tilt him up with his boot in. Catch that swipe. Well, Sal's got some work to do as a team, though. They're down currently to Springboro if they want to repeat as district champs. But they got a few wrestlers still to come here. McCall looking to return the favor here on top to see if he chooses to ride or cover. Excellent oh, scramble nice. here by Hugh. McCall stays with it. Trying to reestablish on top. Both very good scramblers and comfortable in these awkward positions. He did get the uh, two-point reversal. So Holden Hugh getting two-point reversal out of that scramble. I like what Holden did there. He held on to his wrist and was able to hop his hips to the opposite side to get around and get the two in his favor there. Now he's back on top when McCall's going to have to do some work. I think he was looking for bonus here as Carher mentioned the team race between Springboro and LaSalle. If he can get bonus points here, really go a long way for his team. When you and hoping to catch a standing tilt there. Jack McCall able to fight it off. Both wrestlers go out of bounds. Owen Hewn right now currently up six to nothing with a minute 21 left in the second period. I think he's got McCall stunned here. McCall has not been able to get into his offense, and usually he's great in the square play positions, but. So, referee caution Holden Hewn for. Uh, Lining up slightly incorrectly, did not have his head over um, Jack McCall's back, which is required uh, in that in that position when starting. So you do get two cautions. After the second caution, uh, it starts becoming a point infraction for each time you line up incorrectly. There he goes, go, going to work on that tricep trap here, looking for a far cradle. Yeah, he's he got the eye roll ride on the back side, two controlling his hips, so McCall can't get away. He's back half. to his power half. hune has got a lot of length and leverage here. He's getting physical with those crawl faces. Owen Hugh with a very tough uh, leg ride, cross body ride, trying to work a power half here. Carl's got to get his hips up, see if he can get that leg free, come out the back, He's letting the other boot come in. He's got to seal off that side. Colin Hewn switching over to what's called parallel legs, where you throw both legs in and then kind of arch your back to, to break the usual leverage to break the, the man down, which he did successfully there. Now he's trying to turn him, and it looks oh, like he's getting some points. Almost oh, had a stack there on the edge. He got it too there. He got two more back points there at the oh, he end. He did get two. He did. Makes the score 8 nothing heading into the third period. Jack's got a lot of work to do here. But never count him out. I've seen him in these situations before. He's got some throws in his in his bag. But I think Hugh knows that, so he's not going to mess around up top. There's your second caution for Holden Hugh. Okay, this time he jumped the gun. So that was his second uh, uh, false start on a technical violation. Hugh using that three-point stance again to neutralize McCall's attacks, making him think twice before coming in on the shot. Now they're hand fighting here. McCall's got to find a way to get inside control and fire off a shot. He's running out of time here. Hugh gets to the shot. 
able to get his head and chest up here. He's in the better position. Looking to come out the back. I think McCall's going to hopefully get a, a stalemate in this situation. Nice job there. All right, he's got, he's, he's got the legs in again, working that leg right on the left and slipping in the parallel legs. And again, probably going to switch off to a, a power half here, um, if not to turn him, but to kind of work him, work him over and ride him out to protect his lead. And he seems to be doing that successfully. He's not been hit for stalling. Uh, sometimes if you hang back there too long, hip, hip to hip, you will get caught for stalling. Uh, first time's a warning. And then second time is a point, a point, and then two points, and then you're DQ'd. Call here, looking for a reversal. Hugh able to recover and reset his hips. Looking to stretch him back out here. About 23 seconds here. And again, I think Holden Hume just kind of happy to be riding out the rest of this match. About 10 seconds left to secure his victory and district championship. His second district title, he won last year as well. He may have gotten back points. He's gonna so add two more. Dominating fashion, 12 nothing victory for Holden Hume. Sophomore, already a two-time district champ. This year, I think he's gonna be looking to get to the top of that podium at state. Next up is the 138 pound championship. Who do we have? 138 pounds. We have London Murphy of Moeller, sophomore, coming in with a record of 24 and 5, wrestling up against Wyatt Brock, a sophomore from Harrison, with a record of 43 and 2. This is another top 10 uh, matchup. Murphy ranked number 5 in the state, and Brock ranked number 9. It's kind of interesting, I have to comment, so um, Wyatt Brock's uniform is actually in red, black, and white. It's actually <laughs> pink. Pink, black, and white, okay, so it must be a breast cancer thing. It's the only thing I can guess, right? Uh, because their colors are uh, green and white, and sometimes with a little bit of black mixed in there, so. And, and the neon hair. And the neon hair. That's a, that's a Harrison thing for you. Yeah, it always seems like they, they all dye their hair in the postseason. So Lennon Murphy from Moeller in blue oh, nice shot and there. just got taken down. That was Wyatt a freight Brock. train double right there. That was nice. Brock really brought his hips with him on that double leg. Call Murphy standing flat footed. He's getting a little high here. Getting a little high here. He's going to watch he doesn't catch his head. Yep. Lennon Murphy looking for the reversal. Oh, yeah. He's going to get some points here. He's in trouble. He's, he's got those hips down. down. If he doesn't belly down, he is in trouble. He's get yeah, off that Roy, head. Two point there reversal. Go. We got ourselves a 2-2 match. Score should be 2-2. Two, two. Um, two for London Murphy and two for White Rock. Murphy's got to look to settle hit in here on top, slow the pace. It seems like Brock wants to speed up the pace. So I, I think I do see some green in Harrison's uniform on the HW, right? for Harrison Wrestling. So they did mix a little bit of green in there. Looks like maybe he uh, got a cut above his above his right eye. London Murphy is a returning state placer. He was fifth last year at the state tournament and Brock is a returning state qualifier. Uh, he actually wrestled for LaSalle last year, transferred over to Harrison this year. So these wrestlers probably know each other very well, I would guess, you know, having both been in the GCL last year. Absolutely. Uh, both yeah. sophomores, I'm sure they probably grew up wrestling each other throughout grade school, middle school, and now here in high school. It's just a replay of the uh, takedown from Brock. Well, we have a break. The team scores still tight. At the top, we have Springboro with 163 points, and LaSalle is 153 points, trying to narrow that gap and take the lead. 
Harrison is a distant third with 104 and a half points, and then Moeller with 97, and Elder with 89 to round out the top five. Again, so right now you're looking at a break in the action, uh, a little bit of injury time. And now it's what they call uh, cleanup time, where uh, you know they wipe up any blood you know left on the mat from the injury. London Murphy will start back on top here after he got that reversal. White right, Brock hits a quick stand up, defended off by London Murphy. This is like for London a cradle here. For a cradle. Not able to get his hands locked. Good defense by Brock there, catching a hand, not letting him lock his hands. Now he's looking for a reversal of his own. Looking to come out the back. Got his head high. We got stalling on the top man, on Murphy. It's a warning, so next time it's a point. So he has to come off his hips. Um, when the wrestler is on his feet, he has to work to return him to the mat. Brock seems to kind of wait for that leg. He knows it's coming, so he's able to catch it there and get the reversal. He knew it was coming. He kind of just waited and anticipated. Took him straight to his back. London Murphy's fighting off his back here. Brock's got a deep half. He needs to settle in, see if he can get those shoulders down. Looking to step over here. That looks for an tight. assassin. That looks tight. If he steps over, he could put in the double grapevine and, and probably lace it up and end it. That's going to end the first time. period. London Murphy saved by the bell there. He was in trouble. Currently, nope. Wyatt Brock of Harrison is up 6-2 to two over London Murphy. It's a bit of a battle here. A very physical match. Murphy's got to be careful throwing that leg in on top here, Brock. Knows it's coming. Was able to catch it last time for a reversal. See if he changes up his breakdown here. Blood time. Uh, looks like we have a break in the action again. This looks like it's again blood time. And it looks like that cut over his eye is is um, starting to bleed again. So obviously. The medical staff here uh, want to get that stopped, but you have a five minute blood limit, blood time limit. So once you run past five minutes, then the match is over. So, uh, and it is cumulative. So you can bleed once for let's say 30 seconds, be out there wrestling, bleed again. Next time it's, you know, a minute. So again, it's all additive and cumulative. And if you hit five minutes, the, the match is over. It's a, it winds up being a default. Camera switched to the fifth place match here. Where we have Burke from Centerville wrestling Mizukawa from Anderson. Again, this match is important because the winner of this match becomes a state alternate, and if something were to happen next week, then they would slide into that position. Somebody from our district were to come down with any kind of skin issues or can't make the weight. He might actually pin him in this situation. It's unusual, highly unusual to get pinned in a tilt, but he almost had a, had a fall there. If you hold the shoulders to the mat for two seconds cons consecutively, it's a fall and the match is over. And Mizukawa able to get the 7-1 victory there. And he'll become the state alternate here at 100. Okay. Back to our championship match. We have a caution uh, lining up incorrectly. Ham was not over the elbow, or at least not to the referee's satisfaction. Brock with the sit out to a Granby. Well, that's nice. He's got the ankle. He's got a good position here. Oh, yeah. Nice. Brock is definitely, his I love strength, Brock's technique on bottom. Yeah, off the bottom is, uh, he doesn't hit stand-ups. He, you know, he's, he's hit three reversals this, this match so far. Oh, he's high again. Oh, and he just got reversed. He's got himself into a little bit of trouble rushing things on top, not taking his time with getting the boots in there. Brother Murphy needs a turn here before he looks to cut him. Right now, Brock currently up eight to four. 
Brock again is in the pink and black singlet uh, with a little bit of green mixed in for St. Patty's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Over London Murphy of Muller in the blue and gold. Murphy here is really looking for that cradle. Brock is denying it. Well, he's going to need something like an equalizer, like the cradle, if he wants to get back in this match. Being down four right now, Brock's being pretty conservative on bottom. Staying in okay position, not opening up a whole lot. He does need to work to improve and come up, or he's going to get hit for stalling at some point. Mother Murphy's got to keep the pressure on him. If he can keep Brock's head down on the mat, maybe he'll get the ref's attention and gain that stall call as he works for his turn. He's got to get back behind the arms here or Brock's going to hit another reversal. There it is. There's the stall. Awarded to Red. That was a stall on London Murphy. I, I believe the call there really was because he was staying on the hips. He really wasn't coming off the hips. If you're riding parallel hip to hip, uh, eventually the referee should call, and it did happen, you for stalling. Interesting call there as he was working for a turn. Yeah, I thought he was working for a turn, being down by four points. I don't, he doesn't have any other reason not to. The guy on bottom's got to work to improve and come up. London Murphy switches up his technique here on the top. He chooses to throw in legs here, looking for a power half to turn him over. He runs out of time. Murphy's choice, he's going to choose down. As he's down five points heading into the third, he's got two minutes to make something happen. Probably looking for a reversal here first, and then go to work on top. Excellent wow, anticipation there by Brock. He was out. Sit out, turn in, but he didn't He didn't improve his position from there. didn't come up. He kind of stayed there on his heels and got caught. Yeah, Brock kind of expected that sit out, turn, and he kind of relieved his pressure so yeah. he was able to recover. It looked like he was waiting for it. He knew it was coming. Brock riding tough on top, really just trying to now wear there's a stall. Murphy down. There's a stall warning on Brock. So now both wrestlers have a stall warning. The next next uh, infraction will be a point for either wrestler. If I'm London Murphy here, I'm just looking to stand up and get one and try to go to work on my feet. Looked like he was trying to get sit out, turn in, and get to a Peterson roll of some sort as he tried to keep the wrist there. He's not going to fall for it. He's not going to give him that. back out and get his one here. He does get his one. Has not been awarded the one yet. There it is. Now he's got to go to work here. I would look to pick up the pace and see if I can get Brock in a flurry and maybe put him to his back. Got a little careless as he rushed it there and walked right into Brock's shot as Brock had good position staying low. Staying in that three-point stance and Murphy walked right into that shot. Brock just seems to be in a zone here in this match where he understood what he needed to do. And so far, he's been the dominant wrestler here as we've gone past the first period where they seem even. Wyatt Brock riding tight. 36 seconds left in the third period. Seems to be in control here. Worst case, maybe if he gives up an escape or even a uh, reversal. He's got a pretty good lead here. There's the escape. He's back in. You know, it looks like Wyatt Brock just had, had Murphy walk into his double leg shot here, which seems to be his favorite uh, takedown, at least in this match. But Run Murphy able he to get gets taken there. Get two. Run they Murphy award the one. Going. He's getting things going now. Doesn't matter here. He's got to put it to his now. back here. Only five seconds left. It looks like Brock's going to take this one. Here's your champion, Wyatt Brock, the 138 pound weight class over London Murphy. Now wrestling for fifth place at 144 pounds on man number five. Andrews David from Elder versus Tyler Rackett from Springboro. For the 144 pound weight class, uh, who do we have coming up, Luke? We have Cole Juan Snyder of Harrison coming in with a record of 33 and three up against Matthew Zapaniak of Lakota West with a record of 38 and six. And 144 pounds on man number one. Weight cross coverage of OHSAA Wrestling. 
made possible by Swoka, the Southwest Ohio Wrestling Coaches Association. Klein Residential. Jeff Burkhoff, Old Coaches Association. Sarah and Dan Starkey. Mark Flohn of La Rosa's Cold Spring, Kentucky. Steve Burke, Friends of Operation Giveback. Dr. Kevin Riley. Kent Smith from State Farm. And Dr. Stephen Daly. I'm impressed you, you uh, pronounced that last name. Yeah, I'm not sure if I said it correctly. There's a lot of consonants in there. <laughs> it's Jerry, an alphabet soup. Jerry, you right want to give it a try? It's a penny X. This is a, yeah. Matthew's a penny X. This is a, a penny quick shot. There you go. He's able to get around the corner and get a quick two. <clears throat> Ooh, oh, nice Gramby roll. Mm. That's Jerry's bread and butter right there. He go to Gramby school with you, Jerry? Uh, abs absolutely not. <laughs> or else he would have finished it, me. huh? Right. He would have scored five. Exactly. And then went to a, to a fall. Yep. You know, still excellent by Juan Snyder to get himself out of that bad position, reset, and maybe he could get an escape here. Zapaniak, I believe, is a returning state qualifier from a year ago. Currently ranked 11th in the state. Juan Snyder rankings I've seen as high as 19th in the state. So he's had an excellent tournament here, being in the finals and a chance to win a district title. Escape by Juan Snyder here. So right, now, to we, right now, sorry about that. Right now we have Zapaniak up two to one over Juan Seidner of Harrison. And Zapaniak in on a shot, single leg, see if, see if he can work his way around and finish that. Jerry, that Juan Snyder name's familiar in the Harrison area, is it not? Uh, yes, it is. I believe uh, his dad is actually in the corner and his dad is a, a former Ohio uh, wrestling champion himself for Harrison High School. And Zapaniak, he is a returning state placer. He placed eighth last year at 144 pounds. He was a district third last year. Won his first match of the state tournament. Then lost to the state runner-up. Fell to the consolation bracket and was able to rattle off another win. Now at the state tournament, winning two matches before losing two matches is your goal to get on the podium, be top eight. Juan Sider is in on a single and trying to finish. Probably going to get a stalemate here. He's yeah. doing an excellent job yeah. stuffing ahead the there. No improvement actually happening here, so wouldn't be surprised to see a, a stalemate. There it is, the stalemate. When both wrestlers are locked up and there is no improvement, uh, the referee does stop the match. It's called stalemate, and they restart. It's the end of the first period. Two to one in favor of Zapaniak over Juan Snyder. And Juan Snyder will choose bottom, looking to either tie this with an escape or take the lead with a reversal. Juan Snyder hits a stand-up, tries a, an attempt at Granby. Uh, unfortunately, just thwarted through that. Now he does a step over. He's probably going to get his two reversal here, which he does. And he could potentially get back points. Nope. Potentially dangerous. A little bit too much pressure on Zapaniak's shoulder. Zapaniak never established control there on top. Made it easy for Juan Snyder to step over and get that reversal. Currently three to two in favor of Juan Snyder. There it is again. There was the. Um, it looked like there was potentially back points, but the referee waved it off, and Juan Snyder did get the reversal. Oh, we got a cradle, a cradle locked up. Oh, it's it's loose. Able to slip out is Zapaniak, and now he's got Juan Snyder on his back, and they're counting. He did not have the tricep. Since he did not have the tricep on that cradle, 
Paniak was able to slip through and, and put Juan Snyder on his back as he tried taking Matt Zipaniak to his back. Zipaniak's at the leg in here now, looking to try to crank the shoulders over, see if he can get a pin. Juan Snyder able to belly down there. Three points awarded to Zipaniak. He takes a 7 to 3 lead with a minute left in the second period. Huge momentum swing right there. Illegal hold. Illegal hold. I think he figured forward. Is that what it was, Jerry? Um, not sure what. Let's see if we can get a replay. Elliot Spence saw something he didn't like, so he called the illegal hold. One point awarded to Juan Snyder. Makes it seven to four. Yeah, it must have been a figure four. Illegal figure four. Juan yeah, Snyder up quick here, looking to escape. That's Matt returned by Zipiniak. No point escape going on. That way I can see what he's talking. So right now, uh, Juan Snyder currently down by two points to Matt Zipaniak of Lakota West and the red and <clears throat> black singlets. Uh, both wrestlers neutral. About 10 seconds left in the second period. The referee called out of bounds, I believe. They were getting a little bit too close to the other wrestlers on the other mat. Matt Zipaniak chooses down to start the third period. He is up by two points over Cole Waldsnyder of Harrison. Harrison making a good showing here in the Southwest Ohio District. This is our second finalist. We saw Brock a moment ago take a title. Waldsnyder trying to do the same. Got some action for the fifth place match over there with a fan favorite from Springboro, I believe. Back to the championship match, the Paniac with an 8-5 lead. Minute 27, we have blood time. There's a little replay here. It's a Paniac looking to get a stand up and a quick turn in and he breaks out and gets his one, one point for the escape. Cleaning up a little bit of blood on the back of Juan Snyder's shoulder. This is Paniac getting worked on. Looks like it's a lip or mouth bleed that they're cleaning up now. Blood time has stopped. Surprised we don't see you out there, Lou. Aren't you a nurse practitioner or soon to be? That's right. <laughs> I don't do much with blood, though. I'm not so sure that'd be a feeling of comfort to see you out there. I take care of the elderly like you, Jerry. <laughs> All right. With that said, here we are. Uh, about a minute 15 left in the third period, and we have blood time again. This blood's coming from his nose this time. Looking to that far mat, we have a wrestler from, I believe, Middletown. Jacob Castillo. Castillo and Moeller wrestler, Stone like Bolser. They, they have blood time now, too. They have blood time as well. These two met earlier in the tournament, and Castillo fell to Bustler from Moeller in a tight match. And then Bustler fell to Juan Snyder in the semifinals. Back to our championship match. Juan Snyder in on a shot. Sapaniak fighting it off. It's good defense by Sapaniak here. He's caught that ankle, not letting him drive through. Looking to cut the corner, get two of his own. 
Oh, he's got a near side cradle locked up. Let's see if he can finish it. It's pretty tight. Oh, let it go, but he got, got the two there. And he went for the far side cradle right off that. Great transition there by Zepinia. Byron knows a thing or two about cradles. He learned from the best. Who would that be, Jerry? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to make a name for myself with that cradle. I like to think I patented it after using it so much. So. The killing cradle. Still me, Owen, we got a stall. stall call on uh, Zepaniac. First time's a warning, next time's a point. So Pignac looks like he's taking the air out of War Snyder here. Five point lead with 15 seconds left. So Still long, not over, but. As long as uh, so Pignac doesn't Pignac here, he's going to take the title. Five seconds. Nice. I like the way you said that. <laughs> <laughs> we might be saying his name completely wrong. I don't know. Hopefully we're close. Let's see how the announcer says it. There you go. There's your champion, Matt Zapaniak. Dakota West. That was your 144 pound champion. Next up at 150. This oh, be a this, this is, is the a feature bout for me tonight. Featuring Eugene Harney of Sycamore, record of 36 and 4, versus Connor Kleinberg of Springboro. Record of 48 and three. These two met last week, and Kleinberg was victorious in that bout. This one's going to be exciting, though. Both these wrestlers are physical, athletic, and a lot of experience. Yeah. Neither one afraid to let it fly. And right now, you're looking at the uh, third period. Stone, Bustler, a Muller versus Jacob Castillo of Middletown. Uh, Stone Bustle right now is, he is in red, so he is actually up seven to two. In now seven period. to four. Seven Take to down four. by Castillo, he's gonna cut him. He's got, he's got a couple takedowns he still needs to get. Castillo actually has his uh, face taped up over his nose where he was bleeding earlier. Still a minute 28 left in the match. And this is for third and fourth place. So again, the importance of this match, getting third place, you're gonna wrestle somebody that got second at another district. As opposed to fourth place, you're gonna wrestle a district champ. And if you draw somebody from uh, upper Ohio, northern Ohio, from the Cleveland area, good luck. It's usually gonna be a pretty tough match. Absolutely. I Obviously in Ohio. Low single, looking to come out the back. Transitions and is able to cut the corner on top. He's got a leg in, it should be two. There's your two, Rabbit, you called it. He's gonna have to cut him or turn him here. He's looking for, He's a, looking turn for a turn I think I would commit to the turn here. He's got that leg in. Now I look to Now cut he's him. gonna go to cut. Steele's gotta keep that pace here. Nine to six. Plenty of time to make up three points. He's got to get on the pace, though. He can go feet to back and get four points pretty quickly. He's got something in his toolbox. Pushing him out here, get a fresh start. 26 seconds left for Castillo. I'm sure, he wants to avenge that loss earlier in the, in the tournament. He's got to get back to control of that tie, how he got that first take down here. Got another stall warning. There's that stall warning on Bustler. It's his first, so no point awarded. Uh, a little bit desperate with the roll there, and he's in trouble. No points awarded yet, but there's the two. There's two. That's going to seal the deal for the victory for Stone Bustler. Hustling and bustling to victory. Now we're in for fifth place at 150. I find it kind of interesting. So pre-COVID, um, Ohio had a rule on, on hair length. So hair could not be um, 
then there was, it cannot be pass the rear load, and it cannot be pass the car. But that, that's one of the biggest changes I've seen. They've removed all restriction on, on any sort of hair restriction, and so you see all sorts of hair hairstyles coming in and out. Eugene Horney, when uh, he doesn't have his headgear on, he has an amazing head of hair. That's right. I wish I had a little bit of that. I'm actually surprised he's able to get his head gear on all over the top of all that hair he has. Here. My favorites was Jack McCall, that mullet, still rocking it. But here we are, 150 pounds, Harney and Kleinberg. If it was my decision, I would have made this the last match of the night, but they don't listen to us. So both are, are uh, returning state placers. Harney placing third last year, and what did uh, Kleinberg place? I believe he was somewhere in the five, six, seven, eight yeah, range. I believe he placed fifth last year. Fifth, fifth last year. But also had a brother. Different weight classes though last year. Yeah, Kleinberg last year was a district runner-up, losing to Jake Niffenegger from LaSalle, who was a state champ last year. So it seems like every weight class he's at, he always runs into uh, the toughest guy in the tournament. And he's not afraid to go against those tough guys. He runs from nowhere. And neither does Eugene Harley. Kleinberg in the front headlock here, see if he can take advantage of it. Barney looking to circle out, get back to his attacks. Oh, yeah, pick that nice. ankle. Uh -huh. Almost. On the edge of the mat, though. Barney keeping pressure on the right elbow of Kleinberg so that uh, he cannot effectively use his front headlock. Barney also doing a good job of circling in. His back was to the edge of the mat, was able to circle in and, and make it appear that he's doing the work and pushing Kleinberg out. It was excellent defense there by Harney Kleinberg, tough in that front headlock. He was able to neutralize at that time. Both wrestlers still feeling each other out here with 10 seconds left in the first. I expect the pace to pick up in the second and third. Again, look for these two wrestlers next week to place high on the podium. Both of these two ranked in the top three. We have Harney ranked number two, Kleinberg ranked number three. But as I said last week, Kleinberg was able to beat Harney in the sectional finals. And we are scoreless after one period. Entering the second, Kleinberg chooses bottom. So this match kind of reminds me of a, a state finals match, you know, where both, both wrestlers are evenly matched and it's like a chess match, right? Um, with Kleinberg taking down, scoring the first escape. And I wouldn't be surprised to see this period end one nothing, and then you'll have uh, Harney take down, score his escape, winds up being one one, and then a lot of times it goes in overtime, and that's kind of where they sort it out. That's right. These wrestlers very familiar with one another. I hope they open up, open up a little bit more, but like you said, they know each other pretty well, so neither one wants to make that first mistake. Right. It's like a finals match in the state tournament. I mean, it very well could be next week. Yeah, since they are finished one and two, they will be uh, cross-bracketed. Um, obviously, whoever finishes first will be in likely, well, we don't really know if they're going to be in the upper bracket or lower bracket, but they will be separated, and with the only chance of meeting would be potentially in the, in the finals. That would be fun to have two Southwest Ohio guys yeah. battling it out for a title. Last year, I know we had Jake Niffenegger from Southwest Ohio with the state title. I'm trying to think of any others that we had. Last year? Yeah. These two just hand fighting, tying up, not really doing a whole lot, just feeling each other out. Oh, there's a nice shot by Harney. Harney. He's fight in deep. The hands. See if we can finish Climber, it in bounds. Harney uses a freestyle technique there to free that yeah, pressure. That was, that was an interesting um, roll on the edge of the mat. Climber able to defend out of it. Now it's got to be frustrating for the Sycamore wrestler. He gets in on a deep shot, not able to finish. Climber, very good defensive wrestler. There's that replay of the deep shot. Wasn't able to finish it though. Kleinberg's going to take that 1-0 lead, like Jerry said, into the third period, and Harney's going to choose bottom. 
Hardy, of course, would love to have a reversal here as opposed to just an escape. We'll see if he tries for the reversal first and then the escape second. Excellent job by Kleinberg taking away that sit out. Hardy was attempting there, clamping down on that near hip. He's making it work down there on bottom to get this one. He's got wrist control on bottom, puts it on the other side of his head. He's got to work to build his base here and come on up here. He's got a minute 25 left. Kleinberg doing a good job hooking that near ankle. Harney just got hit for stalling on bottom. Did he? He did. So he's got a warning. Quite frankly, <clears throat> I mean, he's, he's riding, right? I mean, he's just kind of hip to hip riding, which should be called stalling also. Yeah, he's just hooking that leg, not necessarily looking to turn there. Thought that stall call was also quick. I mean, both wrestlers have to be working to progress their position with Harney uh, need, needing to progress his position to get out and Kleinberg needing to progress his position to turn him. And honestly, right now, I see Kleinberg hip to hip parallel. Now he's hit for stalling. And he just got hit for stalling. But he is showing to be a pretty dominant top wrestler, being able to hold down Harney. He's not an easy guy to hold down there. It's very explosive, great hips. Harney. Looking to catch him, oh. look for a cow catcher there. He's Did he get, get too high up. there? But Kleinberg gets both legs there, flattens him out. There you go. Again, not Tough panicking. Not panicking in that situation. I thought he was going to get a little high there, but he was able to settle the boots in. Barney's running out of time here. He's got to make his move. He's got to look to come up here. Forget about the reversal. Look to come up to your feet, get one. He needs to push that bottom leg away. Time is running, running out, out of time. Kleinberg with a tough ride there. Got the bottom to finish with a 1-0 victory. You know, again, a lot of times when you have evenly matched wrestlers like that, uh, I hate to say it's boring, but it winds up being, you know, not a lot of points, uh, very strategic, almost like a chess game. And I think that that's what you had there. But the wrestlers could see each other next week. So we'll see. That's right. Hopefully in the finals. Moving on to 157 pounds, we have Jack Willen, another LaSalle wrestler with a wrestler record of 36 and 8, wrestling against McLean Morenci of Anderson, who is 25 and 0. No defeats this year. Currently ranked third in the state. Do you know if these two met previously? To my knowledge, I do not believe so. I think at the Coaches Classic Finals, it was supposed to occur, but Morenci had the injury default out prior to the match, and they did not face each other. And that's why I'm curious. If the injury defaulted, why does he not have a loss? It's <laughs> a good question. If you're in the finals, I guess it doesn't count against you, but I'm not sure how that rules. He's got a quick takedown there. 2 nothing as they roll out of bounds. Anderson wrestling Raptors up against LaSalle Lancer. We got a caution green on Morenci. I believe he jumped the whistle. Morenci, another guy here that's tough riding on top. He doesn't give away points easy, makes you earn it coming off the bottom. So he looks for a tilt there. Morenci trying to get a tilt there. Did he get any points? Did no not points get any points. Jack Willen down. He's also down 2 nothing. He's in the down position. We also have a local Colerain wrestler wrestling for fifth and sixth place. It's uh, a tilt. Kaiser Kostoff of Cole Rain, 39 and 9, wrestling Jaden Little of Harrison, wrestling for that alternate position. Currently on map number one for the championship, Willing and McLean Morenci. 
Mercy able to get two swipes there. Put two points on the tilt. Now we have split screen, so on the right is we have Jane Little of Harrison versus Kaiser Kostoff from Coleraine. And then of course your championship match is on the left. Morrissey's got a very nice tilt series. I mean, I've seen him use it the whole tournament as well as he was in our sectional tournament last week. He hits a lot of tilts from a lot of different angles. He's a returning state placer as well. I wonder if he is uh, looking to wrestle in the future in his college career. I would imagine so, having a very successful high school career. There's that tilt again. Yeah, he's already racked up 10 points here in the first period. Willing's got to keep those wrists away and not let them trap him for those tilts. That, that's the end of the first period. Morency up 10-0 over Willen. Uh, about to start second period. And uh, Willen chooses neutral. Back to McLean Marinci. He is committed to Grandview Valley College and NIA. That's where he'll be looking to go. Their dominant program. So to answer your question, then, he thank will you, be Byron. The college. Very nice. Cost off of Colerain currently with a 4-0 lead in the second period. We're on the right side of your screen. Willen in on a shot, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to finish it, and the referee blows them out of bounds. And a very good mat awareness by Morenci, being on the edge of the mat and able to scramble out, not to give up a takedown. Mercy, a very high IQ wrestler. He's been around the country wrestling against different tough guys. He's seen a lot. He always knows where he is on the mat. Mercy on a double leg shot, but fought off by Willing. Sal. Willing had an exciting win in the semifinals to get here. Morency has been pretty dominant through the tournament here. And depending on his draw next week, he might be hitting the finals as well. Looking for a state championship. Cheering in the background, there's a the battle for third place, uh, resulting in a fall for. Uh, it's like Lebanon. From Lebanon. Liam Schramm over Centerville, Aiden George. We have 10 seconds left in the second period. Right now, the score is 12 0 in favor of Marenzi. And it looks like we have blood time. Let's do a quick score update here while we got some blood time. We have Spring Grove in first place with 169 points. LaSalle is in second with 158. Harrison having a great showing with 112 points, 112 and a half points in third, and Moeller with 99 points in fourth. Followed by Elder with 89 points, Lebanon 86, Centerville 69, Miamisburg 68 and a half. Fairfield 54 and Anderson 53 and a half to round out your top 10. And a match for fifth place for the alternate. Right now, Kaiser Kostoff of Cool Rain is up four to one over Jane Little of Harrison. And it's been a battle here, going back and forth in the third period with about 53 seconds left. Kostoff in on a shot. 
As far as the team scores go, LaSalle needs this win here. I believe Springboro is pretty heavy up top. They have a, a bunch of wrestlers still to come. And I think they're going to be able to, to con control their own destiny here and win a title. Kristoff fighting off the shots by Jane Little, Harrison in the green. Action resumes in the championship match. Five seconds left in the second period, 12 nothing. Morenci dominating. His choice, he's gonna choose neutral. And he needs three more points before this match would end by technical difficulty. Or technical fall, I'm sorry. And your champion for the fifth place alternate is Kaiser Kostoff of Coleraine over Jane Little of Harrison. Coming in here on the shot, see if he can finish and get on the board. Oh, he's in deep. Oh, nice oh, looking for a turn. Nice Lawrence, he rolls through. Nothing. Wow. There's a little display of his athleticism and abilities. Willen been in very deep on that shot, returning to the mat and not able to finish. Blood time. Blood time once again. Seems to be a common thing here on this map. Nothing quite says excitement than blood time, right? Well, it works for the UFC. Yeah. Who doesn't love a good bloody mat, bloody face? So we have some interesting matches coming up past this. Uh, we have Carson Thomas coming up versus LaSalle's Tyler Hicks. I'm sorry, Carson Thomas of LaSalle versus Tyler Hicks of Beaver Creek. We have Sam Libby coming up in Mason versus Matt Kowalski of Springboro. Miles Johnson of Springboro versus Matt Ferguson of Oak Hills. Will Atkins Moeller versus Aiden Weimer of Springboro. And we'll finish off at heavyweight or 285. Lucas Sternberg of Moeller versus Abel McGo of Miamisburg. A lot of action still to come, so this is a good time to take a break, get your popcorn, uh, refill your, your glass of soda or lemonade or whatever it is. <laughs> your drink of you choice. Drink, your drink of choice. And um, we will try to fill some air time for you here in the meantime. Like I said, we have three Springboro wrestlers coming up here still. LaSalle still has two remaining, so that, that title race is going to be close, but I think Springboro is going to be able to hang on to it and knock off the defending champs. All right, we're getting ready to go. He said, I'm not bleeding, you're bleeding. All right, yeah. All right, third period, minute 25 left. Right now it's 12-0 favor of Morrency. And if he gets three points, the match will be over at technical fall. He just got two There's points. Two. This is at 14 to zero. And it looks like he's going to try to get a tilt. Yeah, I don't think he wants to surrender any points. No. This is his he's goal. He's going to try to get a tilt here, and he's had plenty of tilts in this match. And there's a little bit of blood time happening once again. <laughs> Everybody seems to be a little bit uh, Confused about where is the blood coming from? I'm not bleeding. Well, you're bleeding. I'm not bleeding. <laughs> well, you're bleeding. And it looks like the well, trainers are saying nobody's bleeding. Nobody's bleeding. All right. Well, if there's any blood on Willing's singlet, that's not going to be fun to get out. Cold water. Uh, there's an escape. Now take down. We'll end it from Renzi. So he did surrender a point there, 14 to one, but the next takedown would be a technical fall, but Mo Willing in on another shot. shot. Oh, he's and he finished this time. got it. All right. Willing said, I'm not done yet. Mercy got a little neutral. comfortable there, showing off the footwork, and Willing was able to take advantage of time up the shot. Yeah, getting a little fancy, fancy feet. 15 to three is the score. 
Oh, he's got the angle there. Take down, two take down. Very smooth transition. Looks like he's going to try to tilt him up. Is that my guy? Oh, got a little sloppy with it. Willing with the reversal, 17 to five. Clock's winding down. In on a low single, out of bounds. Although the score is out of reach, it's got to be good for the confidence of Willing going forward. He was able to put some things together that worked. Go back to the drawing board for State next week. I believe that should be a takedown. Yep, there it is. We're going to see what the takedown in the match 20 to 5. And actually secures a technical fall with that last takedown. Now we're for fifth place at 165 pounds. Here we go at 165 pounds. We have Carson Thomas of LaSalle, a sophomore, 38 and 8 on the year, currently ranked fifth, versus Tyler Hicks of Beaver Creek, a senior, ranked seventh in the state, and a record of 40 and 5. Carson Thomas in the black singlet. And Tyler Hicks from Beaver Creek in the looks like kind of orange and white singlet. You know, I don't know that we've seen any pins at all, have we, in uh, the finals here? I believe there was one earlier. Um, I believe Lambers over Mosser uh, yeah, at 113 that's... pounds. Right. The rest of the matches have gone the distance. Hicks not able to score on the front headlock there. He had it in tight, but it's not able to find an angle. Right back to that front headlock. Thomas grabbing an elbow to the fin, looking to pass. Hicks has got to try to stretch him out here, find the angle, see if he can get around the score. Charlie Hicks is locked in on that front headlock. I think it's going to get stalemated here shortly if there's no progress. Or they back out of it, which is what they did. Carson Thomas is a returning district runner-up of a year ago. He went one and two at the state tournament last year. Wasn't able to get on the podium. But this year he's looking to win a district title as well as place high at the state tournament next week. Hicks heavy with the hips here, defending that low single there by Thomas. Thomas switching it up, trying to come out the back. Hicks holding on for dear life, looking for a stalemate. Still wrestling in the same position. This is probably going to get stalemate again, and it was. Injury. Progress happening Injury time on up. Thomas. Seems to be in a bit of pain. Maybe he twisted his ankle. That's Hicks what it was looks locked like in to the me. cross tight there. He grabbed the ankle to defend that takedown. time right now. Hopefully we're going to get, uh, get started here shortly. It looks like clearing the mat and getting the wrestlers back out. So with that injury time, if Carson Thomas were to need another injury time, then the uh, other opposing wrestler would have choice in that situation. He could choose to go neutral, top, bottom, wherever he is most comfortable or if he's looking to score. Hicks really controlling the center of the mat there. Getting pretty physical with the hands. Carson Thomas gets a choice. Start second period. And I believe he chose down. Seems to be a uh, Referee's being questioned. I'm not quite sure what's being questioned here. 
think he might just be asking him for some clarification about the hands of the face, perhaps, there as they went out of bounds. Maybe some unnecessary roughness, perhaps, but it, again, this is wrestling. I had to point that out to Jerry earlier today that we're not playing patty cake out there. He was a little concerned about some bleeding. <laughs> it was me that was bleeding. Right. <laughs> Hicks, as a senior, looking to be physical with the sophomore way. Thomas here. <laughs> Got a caution, false start. And I believe that was on uh, Hicks of Beaver Creek. Yeah, that sit out there by Thomas. Hicks just goes to the front headlock to keep control. Trying to get back around there. Oh, Thomas drops down to a nice single here, looking for a reversal. Oh, he's got the leg. Cuts step it back. Over he's got to step it. over that leg for two. Great Scramble. job by Hicks on the roll through to get his hips up. Carson Thomas opted to not get his one and try to get two, and I think now he's going to be in a bit of a scramble. He still has a chance to get the two oh. if he can come out the back and finish on top. He better stay in bounds. He's got to stay out in bounds. bounds. Potentially dangerous. Too many body parts going the wrong way. That was a great scramble by both wrestlers there, both of them being stingy, not willing to give up points. It looks like he gave one escape. I'm not sure. Oh, he did give an escape. I'm not sure yes, how there that was happened. a loss of control, perhaps. Oh, so Tom is it? I am not sure. It felt like not, loss of control. It did not look like an escape, but maybe it was. Tom is it? Well, I guess that's why we're up shot. here and they're down there. Thomas transitions off the front hand lock back into that single. And he's able to finish this time. 3-0 in favor of the sophomore. No blood time, but a hand gear adjustment here. Carson Thomas currently up three to nothing over Tyler Hicks of Beaver Creek. We're in the second period, 50 seconds left. And Beaver Creek, Beaver Creek wrestler is down. Got a caution, five yard penalty. I believe that's the second, second caution. Double caution. So you get two cautions. After that, it's a point for every uh, technical violation in terms of lining up incorrectly. Shot right away. The escape was awarded. Caught the heels there, working to improve, working up the body here. He's getting two and maybe he more. And there, back one swipe. He's, he's he got two. Trouble. Oh, yeah. He's in trouble here now. Team race. He's, he's, looking, he's looking for the and pin. There it, there it is. Carson Thomas. The sophomore with the pin. Carson Thomas, the champion at 165 with the fall. Over Tyler Hexabee. Next up is the 175 pound weight class. We have Sam Libby of Mason, a senior, currently ranked sixth in the state with a record of 41 and five versus Matt Kowalski of Springboro, a sophomore, ranked ninth in the state with a record of 44 and eight. These two met a week ago at the sectional finals at Lakota East and Sam Libby was your champ at that tournament. Wrestlers lock up in the underhook scenario. Sam Libby in the face mask. 
or you must have a nose injury. It's typically um, what you're going to wear when you have a broken nose and you're continuing to wrestle. Makes it a little bit less painful. Well, especially wrestling Kowalski, who likes to be physically there, so might need that face guard to protect his face there. Great. Both guys like they got an underhook here, ear to ear, stomach. This is both locked up ear to ear, referee breaking it. it was a little bit of a stalemate. No real action can occur. And they go right back into it. Libby trying to work for head position here, getting blocked off by Kowalski as he defends and tries to fight inside. Both wrestlers pretty much had a standoff so far. Not a lot of activity, uh, a lot of posturing. Again, they wrestled last week, so they know each other. So it becomes a bit of a chess match. Both wrestlers waiting the other one to make a mistake first, as they don't want to make, make a mistake. So this period's going to wind down. Libby, and, yeah, I'm not so sure anybody's going to... Libby's trying to force the action a little bit more here, but it's not able to get through the hands and head defense of Kowalski. And a score of this first period we have. And the referee talking to them a little bit. I, I think he's telling them we need to get moving. Need to get the match, you know, more activity. Matt Kowalski choosing down. The objective, obviously, to escape or get a reversal. So far, we've had no overtime matches here. This one kind of feels like it might be headed that way. Could be another one-to-one. -one. <laughs> oh, here we go. Granby try. Kowalski looking for the reversal here. Libby trying to defend, keep his head down and readjust his hips. Kowalski now trying to work out the back. Interesting position here. Libby wants to hold this position. Kowalski wants to work his head up and turn in, but. Interesting position. He could, if he would kind of lay his left cheek down on the mat, he could, could potentially uh, put the man on his back and, and pin him, actually, from that situation. Yeah, he definitely needed to crack down that, that hip there and see if he could get his head a little higher and turn in. But uh, Libby did a good job holding the ankle there, not letting him turn. Matt Kowalski, a spring bro. Almost got out. He's working to get out. Gets a stand up, goes right to the head and arm. No points scored. And they're going to restart them, bring them back to the center of the mat. Kowalski almost, almost getting up and out here. As you see, he hits a stand up, does a quick turn in, goes right to a next inch, tries to get it, does not get his hips in the right position, and does not get to finish it. Kowalski definitely picking up the pace here with a sense of urgency trying to get this one point. Like we said, this match might be headed to overtime here in a 1-1, depending on what happens here. Yeah, I think he realizes the importance of getting out and getting his one point here because uh, it's going to be hard to hold Libby. Oh, and that's as it gets the reversal there, wow. Nice Gramby right into a uh, two-point reversal. I thought Libby should have gave that escape up there and went back to his speed trying to hold on and Kowalski took advantage of it there. It's gonna be on the switch. Nice. Oh, nice scramble. That's gotta be two. And rolled by Kowalski. And we're locked back up two to two. Now we're getting some action. For big guys, they move pretty well. Yeah, they both seem to be comfortable moving on bottom here, so we'll see how they adjust going forward in this third period. Stalling on Libby. Replay. Kowalski here. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Both these guys have picked up the action here, but 
Waits for the right moment, hits that Granby roll, and able to get the reversal, as you saw. If I'm Libby, I'll take that stall call because Kowalski is setting up another Granby there. Kowalski it looks like up. he's doing it now. He's got 15 seconds. Uh, Libby doing a good job getting wrist control here, trying to keep him from hitting those Grambys. To the third period right. we go. Two to two, we got a barn burner here, Jerry. Third period, who, Libby. Wants, it? who wants it more, right? Libby on bottom. I'd say he's in the advantage position at this point, being on bottom. He's able to get an escape or reversal. We'll see how much energy he exerted though in that last period. Could be wrong, Kowalski could be a hammer on top as he's working <laughs> a near side cradle. I think Libby's just trying to pick his spot here, but he's got to be careful. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh. Had it. What was the potentially dangerous? Potentially dangerous. Something I, the referee didn't like. I don't understand how that was potentially dangerous. It was a near side cradle. Now maybe his head hit his Let's hip see. pointer. Yeah, his head wasn't necessarily in the ribs there. It was kind of low down there on the hips. Kind of cranked him a little bit too hard there. I mean, that's the first time I've ever seen that call potentially dangerous. Yeah, I've not seen it there. I mean, I've seen it where a guy may be putting his head in the, in the spine of his opponent, but where he was there, I didn't think it was potentially dangerous. Well, that's kind of where you're taught to finish that technique there. As we slide over to the third place match. We jump over to the third place match, LaSalle, Cam Harden. Finishes with a 9-0 victory. Looks like he fell to oh, no. Fairmont's no. Furman Merzave. Merzave. Okay. God bless you. <laughs> all right, back to our championship match. Sam Libby and Matt Kowalski all tied up in the third period. Uh, Matt Kowalski liking that near cradle and looks like he's going for it again. I was wondering if he was gonna go back to it after he just got called for potentially dangerous. If he was going to be afraid to hit it again. But he went back to it. Libby not giving it up. That's a good job trusting in your technique. He knows he was hitting it the right way, so force you to call it again. Well, I guess it doesn't hurt to go for it again, right, Jerry? I mean, he wasn't pointed for that. Yeah, I mean, it's potentially, it was called potentially dangerous, but in actuality, if the uh, wrestler uh, kind of yelled out if they were in pain and he was actually on, on the verge of being turned, which you could debate. He was on the verge of being turned with that cradle. There should have been um, two near fall awarded for that. But then again, that's just me. I'm just, I'm your announcer. That's right. That's why I'm up here. Kowalski actually got war for Stalin there. And <laughs> Kowalski to actually, cut him. he cut him, yeah. Three to two, Libby leading. Oh, Kowalski oh. with a nice slide by here. Can he finish? He's got to get the hands to touch. Got to return. Got to oh, return. Oh, hit. We'll see the hip action. Nice. Oh, and there we go. Libby attempted on the switch there. Just trying to get his hips back square. It didn't work. And we're right back here with Kowalski riding tough on top again. He's got about 25 seconds to continue riding, and I, I got a feeling he's going to get hit for stolen if he just hangs on. Yeah, he's got to be careful or he here. He should. It's like he's trying to set up a Granby roll himself, but with a half in there, it's kind of hard to do. Now, Libby kind of hurt himself there with his head down. If he would have had his head up, he might have worked for the stall car. He's got his head down. He needs to elevate here, and he's going to run out of time. He's got to get some hip separation on bottom. There you go. Kowalski avenges his loss of a week ago. He's your champ. Champion at 175 pounds, Matt Kowalski of Springboro over Sam Libby of Mason. It was all good. Here we go, moving on. I know I said that the earlier match was my feature of the night, but this one might be up there with it. We have Miles Johnson, a senior from Springboro, 48 and 2, currently ranked fifth in the state, versus Wyatt Ferguson of Oak Hills, currently 41 and 1, ranked second in the state. This one should be exciting. Wyatt Ferguson, what a nice slide by there, Jerry. Looked like you being your pro. Quick takedown. Goes right into a wrist ride. 
wide. Another guy tough on top there. As you see, he gets the tilt. Likes wow. to make his man earn it off bottom. He He's may going hit him right here to work. Well, I didn't see that coming. A quick 4-0 lead for Ferguson. Committed to Davidson, I believe, to continue his wrestling career. He's got the Browns and the Browns. Mike Ferguson putting in the boots. And wow, he's scoring good. some points here. More back points. Looks like he might have an opportunity to go to a power half here. And he mostly turned him with his hips there than the, the power half. Getting a little high. Johnson kind of shocked here. 7 0 quickly. And your cradle up to oh, cradle. Far cradle two. You know we love our cradles. We do love our cradles. Well, Johnson back oh, on his back. back oh, points. Wyatt looking to finish it here. I think he's going to get it. Oh, I didn't see this coming. I did not either. Did I say this was my future match? Uh, you alluded to something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's still some time left. Well, Johnson's got to find a way to get his bearings here. This match has been four. blown wide open. Well, Ferguson just stays in good position. He doesn't make mistakes, and Miles Johnson has made a few so far. Probably about three. He three. for all of them so far. So about 21 seconds left here in the, the first period. Wyatt Ferguson already has a 10-point advantage. He is not going to give up that escape. <laughs> nice nice lift return. return. By Ferguson. Riding heavy on top. Missed a crude opportunity there. Making Miles think twice about coming up like that. With no back pressure, he was just lifting him to the sky, took him for a ride. Johnson's coach is trying to get him out of his own head here to keep, keep wrestling through it. Still a lot of time. Wyatt choosing down to start the second period here. I like that choice by the coaches not to defer, continue to build your lead, keep that momentum going. It's like a snowball effect. Yeah, I mean, he's had pretty good success on top. I'm kind of surprised he didn't choose top. Oh, wow, quick bottom stall man. warning there on bottom. That oh, was quick. Well, his head was off just the getting one for stalling. Perhaps a Springboro ref. So he is from Senator. <laughs> oh, there you go. A little Dayton home cooking here in their gymnasium. He is just kind of hanging out on bottom. I think he has the ability to come up. up. Yeah. Now yeah. he's got his head down on the mat. I would have, this would have been a time to hit him rather than uh, reaching earlier. back. I don't know yeah. about that. I'm yeah. kind of surprised at that. It seems to be getting a little sloppy here. I know he's up 10 nothing. Yeah, this is a position uh, he's going to have to improve on going to college here in the bottom. Yeah, yeah, reaching back is not something most coaches teach, but for some it can work. I don't know if that's a bad habit to reinforce. What do you think, Jerry? Do you teach reaching back, Jerry? Oh, we got a stalling. One point awarded to Johnson. It's 10 to really? 1. Okay, so he's on the board. Johnson on the board. First, he's got to be careful here going forward with his head on the mat. He's got to get his head up and try to get his hits up and out. Work to come off bottom. Oh, Ooh, he's, he's in trouble. He might defensively pin himself. He's not careful. Nice okay. try to tilt there, but uh, unfortunately, Wyatt Ferguson's balance just too much. <laughs> Goes right into a, a uh, Granby and almost secures an escape or reversal. Uh, Ferguson appears to be kind of wrestling in like spurts, right? Like burst of energy, uh, maybe catches kind of breath, burst of energy, catches breath. I mean, which is which is a strategy in itself. Yeah, I think he might have gone to cruise control or autopilot here in that second period on bottom with a 10-0 lead. Now 10-1 after the stall point. Now they're on their feet. Here we go, the attempt at the uh, tilt, unsuccessful, almost I poke and, Oh, they're going to give him a point for that. 
Well, there's an inadvertent eye poke and there's an intentional eye poke, and that one was deemed intentional by the ref, and a point was awarded to Ferguson. This works out for Ferguson here because he gets to catch his breath. It seemed to be a little gas coming out that second period. There's a lot of energy getting those points. Jerry, they don't always reward a point for a poke in the eye, correct? No, it's, you know, if it's inadvertent um, or if it's because your hands are to the face and you poke them in the eye, then uh, that's, that is illegal. They hands seem to the face in general are illegal. It just so happens that I gets poked every now and again and there's a casualty of war, right? They seem to have found a happy medium with it a couple years ago. It used to be a point of emphasis. You saw it called a lot. Now they kind of let it go if it's unintentional. Springboro in on a shot. Oh, I Ray thought he Ferguson touched there. Off of the wizard. The was that not two with his oh. hand touched there? I think he rushed it a little bit going up to the body. He had the leg up off the mat, and then he goes to the hips where Ferguson is very strong and very comfortable. Another point here, one red. Another poke. Hands of the face, that one was called. Hands of the face. Yeah. There it is. You better be careful with those hands of the face. The next one is two points. Correct. Yeah. And if he does one more after that, he's disqualified. Well, at the rate this is going. Well, why is in control here? He's just got a hand fight on the center. Make Johnson come to him as he's doing right now. Yeah, he's controlling that center. Says, come on back in. <laughs> Enter my dojo. Yeah. If you must. He's very oh. inviting, though. Yeah. Wyatt did a good job there meeting Johnson at his level, denying that takedown and circling out. That Wyatt may be all Ferguson she wrote for Johnson. Totally in control of this match. Is he a returning state placer by chance? I believe he was injured last year, and he was not due to injury. Hmm. He had a season cut short last year due to injury. <clears throat> Definitely looking to get on the podium this year. I think that's a strong possibility, especially if he comes out of here as a district champ. With only one loss. I wonder who his loss was. It was two. That would be me. Uh, warning. No. <laughs> Point awarded. Um, Matt Ferguson stalling. Time running out for Johnson. Ten Major points score. collected early by Ferguson will be the difference. It's holding up. Stays in control. Never look two. back. Oh. Uh, since that flurry in the first period, he kind of went on cruise control, finished out the match. District champion Wyatt Ferguson of Oak Hills. As we continue, we have a sophomore from Moeller, Will Atkins, with a record of 37 and 10, currently ranked 10th in the state, versus Aiden Weimer, another Springboro wrestler, another sophomore, currently 45 and 10, ranked 12th in the state. Atkins in the blue, gold, and white singlet for Muller. Atkins, a returning state qualifier from a year ago. Weimer, I believe he is also a state qualifier from a year ago. Were they both at 215? That is a good question. I've watched Adkins uh, several times this year. He likes to do a lot of upper body throws. So as you see, he's trying to set up the underhook to an upper body hip toss. His style is very similar to Jake Thompson. Uh, 
past Muller wrestler. Likes to hang in that under, under hook and control the match with it. And like Jerry said, he's not afraid to throw you with it. Over on the position, Atkins looking to dig that left underhook back in and regain control. Again, Will Atkins trying to work that underhook series, trying to get in for a no. toss, preferably. So Weimer, he was a state qualifier from a year ago and was able to win one match. Hoping to improve on that this year. And how did Atkins do? Atkins also a state qualifier, and he did not was not able to win a match as a freshman at 215 pounds. That's a big freshman, and it's it's so pretty difficult so for. Uh, met last year. <clears throat> Here he is working under. They were at different weight classes. And out of bounds. I like what Weimer's trying to do there to negate that underhook. He's going to a two-on-one baseball grip where he's climbing the arm and passing it through, trying to get down to a single. Great way to defend a guy that likes to go upper body and control you there. He also has his head position down and in the way, trying to pick a spot to re-attack Atkins here. Looks like these two met a week ago at the Lakota East sectional, and Weimer was your champion. Really? I would have said he's, you know, just based on what I'm watching, seems to be a bit more on the defense this match. What was the score? Excellent question, Jerry. <laughs> Give me a moment and I'll find out for you. Atkins takes bottom here. Right over with a nice breakdown on top here. They can establish control, trying to bundle that arm underneath. Looks like Weimer won three to one in overtime. Oh. So look for this one to be close. I like the movement by Atkins there. He didn't get discouraged being broken down. He kept working his way back up and almost got the escape there. So three to one in overtime, that means they each scored a point from the bottom probably. Taking it to overtime as a one-to-one -one tie, and then the takedown wins it. So there's your one point. And we're on pace for that again. <laughs> Hand fight and collar tie. Atkins both over tie with Weimer. Atkins pushing him around the mat. Atkins working it, working his head, keep, keeping the pressure on his head, trying to wear him down. He's got leverage as he digs an underhook, but Weimer doing a good job of staying in good position, circling out of there. Now working to a front headlock for Atkins. Weimer doing a good job keeping his head in the way, even though he's getting dominated with that underhook. He's not giving up any offense to Atkins. Working those underhooks, pushing them around the mat. I think there's going to be a stall point awarded to Atkins, and that's Got the takedown. And the takedown. So he just went from one nothing to two nothing to four nothing. And time continues to tick. So Atkins could avenge his, his loss from last week. That's correct. We've seen that happen earlier this evening. We yeah. have with Kowalski over to Libby. So from week to week, these guys are figuring each other out. Oh, Weimer there oh, nice with a nice attempt at a reversal. Thought he let the cradle go a little prematurely here, but he's working for team. These two may meet again next week as well. Action's just trying to hold on here. Escape not giving up any points when time runs out, third period. I'm assuming Weimer is going to choose down. That was great mat nice. awareness by Atkins knowing how much time is left on the clock and hanging on until the time expires. You can see Atkins is pretty well coached. He has two state champs in his corner. 
Jermaine Lindsay and Stefan Myers. Excellent coaches here in the Southwest. Cuts him, we're neutral, four to one. It's gonna be interesting because was Atkins hit from uh, Stone in the or was that Weimer? Weimer was, and Atkins received the point for it. <clears throat> so now and there's it's, another stall well, now by it's Atkins. Well, against Atkins. Okay. I don't really understand oh. that one. He was blocking off. He was, Shoving him out, I guess? Well, yeah, he was pushing him out. He's got to look to attack. He never dropped down to his shot. He just tried to bulldoze him off the mat. They're going to call that. Yeah, he's trying, to get, he's trying to work the ref, get some more stall calls against Weimer. Weimer with a shot here, but... Good defense. Great defense by Atkins, stuffs the head. Now he's looking to score here, see if he can pass the leg by. Great re by Weimer though. Weimer's gonna have to pick up the pace here. If he's gonna hope to repeat his victory from last week over Atkins. A lot of his shots are straight on. He's not finding any angles, making it easy for Atkins to defend those shots. Atkins working that double underhook series. We're gonna see a throw here or maybe a leg sweep. Oh, nice little pass by there for two. I gotta say he does that pretty well. Double underhook. Yeah. He gets a slide by, almost a slide by. Yeah, he jacks it up so high, makes a guy stand up, you almost give it to him every time. Having that length and leverage certainly helps. And again, we've seen that style of offense before from Muller wrestlers in the past with the Thompson brothers. So seeing a very different match than last week play out, seven to one, Atkins with a pretty dominant lead here now in the third period. Weimer stands up, tries to get out, having a hard time getting out here. Yeah, no worries Atkins at here. not giving up that leg. Gets a stalemate call. Wrestlers will restart. Atkins is a pretty lean 215 pounder. I believe he plays football, and we're going to see his most likely drill partner come up in the next bout, Sternberg. Having those two in the room battling every day, I'm sure that doesn't hurt. Trying to, trying to hook that leg. He's walking to the feet. He gets the takedown. Now we got the takedown. Seven to four. Cuts him, but he's not going to have enough time here. Atkins wisely holds on to the leg. <clears throat> He'll take the stall call here if needed. There you go. The champion sophomore, Will Atkins. Now we're going to play for sixth place. And we move right along to our final match of the night. We have Lucas Sternberg, a sophomore from Moeller, 41 and 12, currently ranked fourth in the state, versus Abel Nago of Miamisburg, a junior, ranked seventh in the state, and currently holds a record of 45 and four. Both very athletic heavyweights, they move well. I would imagine they both play football as well, as we see a lot of athletic heavyweights. Yeah, I think this is going to be an exciting match. I think it's going to be very physical. I watch both wrestlers uh, throughout the day, and you know, there's definitely a, more of an aggressive style of wrestling um, in both their toolboxes. We have a split screen as well. We have Jabril Bradford of Cincinnati Northwest versus Richard Thornton of Springboro. As he steps over, he gets the assassin looking for a pin here on the spring barrel kit. He's got to get his hips over. Oh, this rolls him through. I thought Jabril had that, and he did not. Abel looks to be commanding the center here in the championship match in the black singlet, Sternberg in the blue and gold. Traditional molar colors, sporting the mullet. I got it. So 
surprised those molar signals haven't faded over time. They've had those for a long time. Always seem to pull them out of districts. It's a very classic look, not too much going on. You see some singlets that have a little, are a little too busy for my taste. <laughs> Jerry prefers the two-piece singlets. <laughs> I saw him in the gym wearing it. You gotta work out on something. That is true. Jerry, two-time Ohio power walking champion. Jabril. Just what he's chasing after his grandkids, that is. Currently trailing three to two to the Springboro wrestler Richard Thornton and no score on the championship map between Sternberg and Nago. And they're getting physical here in the middle, trying to force the issue. Oh. oh. Oh, Sternberg is very physical in his uh, semifinal match. There was a questionable shove out, push out, where his opponent went flying into the, so, some chairs that were nearby, knocking the medical staff's equipment Bit of a across the gymnasium floor. Bit of a headbutt being claimed by um, Jabril. And I like his aggressiveness. You can't be timid at this stage of the year. That's right. As we said earlier, this is wrestling, not patty cake. Patty cake. That's right. All right. Sternberg chooses down to start the second period. It's and a nice third place match. We're locked up at four to four. Gets his escape. <laughs> One to zero. Miamisburg. Uh, Thornton oh, holds Bradford to his back tossed. here. Bradford trying to fight off. He's on the edge of the match. He got to know where he's at. Wait, is Sternberg Able to green? Get out of bounds. Or is he red? He is green. Green, there's the ankle brace. So I see it now. So Sternberg's leading 1 0. And Jabril is down 9 4 for third place. Bradford did a nice job fighting off his back over there on mat three. Looked like he could have gave up the pin there, but got out of bounds. Sternberg and Jabril kind of at a standoff right now. District championship on on the line, so both wrestlers uh, now a little bit more cautious in terms of how they're wrestling. How are we doing in team score? You seen the team score? The up team here? score, I believe Springboro has locked it up. I don't think LaSalle doesn't have any other wrestlers going, and the la after the last match, Springboro with 176 points, LaSalle with 164, and a distant third, Harrison with 112 and a half. Springboro will be your Southwest Ohio District Champions. I believe they won two years ago, and LaSalle was runner-up, and then last year LaSalle was your champion. Springboro, I believe, was your runner-up, so they're so we got a little rivalry forming here for the district champion. I think we do. Both both teams sending seven to the state tournament next week. Oh, and a fall. <clears throat> Jabril Bradford uh, getting pinned by Richard Thornton of Springboro. Oh, and that's going to add to Springboro's lead, so. So they're getting physical here on Matt Wong. Oh, that's Coffin a takeout nails. way after. If we get there as we move over to the championship match. Byron, take us through what just happened. I thought they were clearly out of bounds there as you saw them walking back to center and he lowers his go. level and just lowers the boom. Clearly out of bounds yeah. there. Yeah, they were out. And they maybe thought. Probably didn't hear the whistle, maybe. Mm. Looks a little premeditated to me. Heard the whistle? I don't know. He did a. Uh, it, was, it was definitely a football Blast attack. double, it sure yeah. was. Oh, he's getting a little yeah, sloppy nice on top, and, uh, and there's a reversal. reversal. Yeah, nice. To start the third period. Maybe this might be our first overtime match of the day. Oh, That's yeah, we've thing. not seen one yet, have we? He's got to get up. Back pressure, and he's out. He's about to get a little chippy here down the Both strip. wrestlers looking to be wearing down a little bit for these big boys. 
two to two, 130 remaining. Let's see if anybody opens up here, pushes the pace. I tell you what, it's been high pace, but Snapping. both these guys. Oh, backs out. Look like they still got some in the tank here. Usually you see these heavier guys start to wear down in the third period, but they're Jerry, getting after. Jerry alluded to it earlier that some of these bigger guys kind of pick their spots when to go and when to kind of be on reserve. Right. It is, it is oh, a style. Oh, there's a blast double, but oh, it's but the fit that well, down. we attack Ooh. out of bounds. Man, they move like lightweights right there. These big boys are moving. He's got to shoot with that head up. See where he's attacking. I think it's a little hard when you mean the chest block there. Or the that is a lot of weight coming down power on you. your head through there. Looking pretty athletic. Like a Ford F-150 coming around that corner. <laughs> a diesel, diesel truck. I got a feeling um, they're not going to want to end this in a tie and go to overtime. So I think somebody's going to start start a flurry here, I would, I would expect. He's got to be careful here. He doesn't push in too much to get thrown. Mm -hmm. 39 seconds left in the third period. All knotted up at 2-2. Two two. I don't believe there have been any stall warnings here, so both guys can kind of pick their spot. No need to chase after a takedown. No, you still got an extra minute here if needed. Jerry, as a former ref, do you call a heavyweight match a little different than maybe the smaller guys as far as calling stalling on guys? Well, you're not supposed to, but it does happen. Um, a lot of times just by nature, you know, the small the guys are here. Uh, a lot of times a lot more nimble, a lot more quick. Uh, all those, these guys are both moving pretty quickly. These They're guys both, are moving. Very athletic, yeah. The so big fellas still late in the match, 14 seconds, 2-2. Two to two. And I'm surprised there wasn't a caution call because Nago didn't even have his foot on the line. And they blew the whistle, but no caution. Sternberg is attacking and he's driving. Nago trying to get around for two. <laughs> Out of bounds. Sometimes... And it looks like we get our first overtime of the day, gentlemen. Sternberg does become a little susceptible and vulnerable when he comes attacking like that. He gets out of position, his weight's going one way, gets off balance. He's looking for the stall call, right? I mean, he's trying to push the pace. Now they are in overtime, here we go. To your point, Lou, let's see if he makes that adjustment here on the takedown attempt and maybe try to cut the corner a little bit more instead of driving right through. Yep. Nago's just taking him where he wants to go when he's driving forward at him. He needs to get an angle. Nago also Slide has excellent him. He's been able to re-attack every time off his double leg. Both right. Oh, there's a shot yeah, again. Head again. down. See? There's your stall call. There's the hips again. There's your stall warning on red. Nago. And he is looking a bit gassed. They're both looking pretty tired for these big fellas. I but they've been a lot supplying a lot of action for us. Yeah. We're going to see Sternberg continue to push the pace because next uh, stalling, it's one point for him and the match is over. The go needs a circle here, try to establish some control in the center. I believe I said this would be the feature match. And that's why it's last of the night. Sternberg in deep, but nago has got good hits. Re -attack he's again. He's oh, got to keep his hips he's going to get oh, it. He's got the two. There's your champ. In overtime, truly in fashion. Nago. Nago, Miamisburg. Champion. champion over Lucas Sternberg. I'd like to thank it, thank our viewers uh, once again. This is Jerry Tishley and Byron Keeling from the Southwest Ohio District Tournament Championship Championship Round Division One. Uh, your champion, your team champion, winds up being Springboro. That's correct. Number two, LaSalle. LaSalle, then Harrison, I believe Moeller, following that. Uh, gentlemen, I just want to say it's been an honor calling these matches with you tonight. It has been a lot of fun. We're going to do it next week. See you at the state meet next yep, week. See you guys in Columbus. Signing off.
Weight Cross coverage of OHSAA Wrestling, made possible by SWOCA, the Southwest Ohio Wrestling Coaches Association, Klein Residential, Jeff Burkoff, Old Coaches Association, Sarah and Dan Starkey, Mark Flong of La Rosa's Cold Spring, Kentucky. Steve Burke, Friends of Operation Give Back. Dr. Kevin Riley. Kent Smith from State Farm. And Dr. Stephen Daly.